I want to spend this part three on the second reading from Colossians. It's short, but implied there is the whole foundation for the Christian life. So we're going to go over it slowly. huh? Um, our text starts, brothers and sisters, that's the way to get our attention. It's not in the scriptural text, but that's all right. Um, it's like, the Lord be with you. Why do I keep saying, Lord be with you in Mass? Pay attention, that's why. The Lord be with you, oh, yeah, yeah, and with you. And then I've got your attention, and then I go on. You know, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Yeah, that's we should do that, yeah. Well, then lift up your hearts, you see? Or the other way around. But um, the liturgy is full of these little human things to help us, because we're so stupid and so weak, you know. Uh, in the Eastern Rite, we say, um, how does it go? Well, again and again, let us pray to the Lord. But the other one is, you know, attention, uh, you see, uh, and that's, they're less Italian about the way they uh, tell us to get with it. All right. Now, so therefore, this is Colossians 3, if you rose with Christ, seek what is above. Now, the if is the kind of if like, if you're a citizen, you should vote. You are a citizen. You see what I mean? It's not if if you happen to have risen with Christ. If you believe and you are baptized, you are risen with Christ. So, uh, the the English translation, if then, they put in a then, which is helps. It's not a hypoth- hypothesis. Since you have risen with Christ. Now, what does that mean? Am I risen with Christ? Are you risen with Christ? This is where, you see, that thing we talked about months ago, Lexio Divina. That's the text, Lexio. Now, Meditatio, the next step. What does it mean that I've risen with Christ? Is this just a figure of speech? No. We just had, quite recently, Romans 6, with a whole dynamic of this. How that act of love in which Jesus died, which has uh, almost an infinite power, infinite certainly as the act of the word, but even in his humanity, that act of love was so powerful you see, that it couldn't die. And he's raised in that act of love. But then we are baptized into his death. So that act of love takes root in us. And that's what he means, you see. At baptism, you see, you rose with Christ. You're not the same. Now, when you're talking about a little baby, There has to come a moment, we talked about this before, when that little baby makes up his own, her own mind, I'm going to be a Christian. Then they draw on all these resources they had at baptism. But they got to make up their mind. Nobody gets to heaven by accident. You know, you got to will it. And so, how lucky we are then when we have a community, we go to a parish, there's good preaching, Reminds us every week, I've got to choose the Lord. I've got to turn from sin and choose the Lord. And that is, in colloquial American, what Paul is saying. If you died with Christ, since you died with Christ, you know, seek the things that are above. Now, because of just our whole culture, you get the impression, you get the image the guy looking up to heaven, like looking for the things above, you know? Useless. Don't you get that? I do. Um, so, that's not what it means. It means seek the heavenly realities that surround you. The above is not a geographical designation, it's a qualitative designation. 
Well, what's above? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Mother of God, the angels and the saints, all loving. Huh? The heaven, according to Augustine, I think I quoted this before, is unus Christus amans se ipsum, one Christ loving himself. So seek that and have company with that. You see, that's why we pray to the saints. Not only make novenas to get, I don't know, to graduate or get a new bicycle or whatever, you know. No, it's to get used to them and, and, and interact with them. And they interact with us. They really do. I was blessed with a bunch of really good, holy Irish relatives. And they all talk to the saints. And the talk, saints talk back to them or help them. My Aunt Mary was the prince, princess of the whole crowd. I could, she took the subway to meet her husband, got off at the wrong stop in New York. The subways were safe in those days. But nevertheless, she comes up, no husband. She's really concerned. A young man comes and says, may I help you? She said, yes. I was supposed to meet my husband. Where? At such and such a street. Oh, you got off one stop early. He calls a cab, says, please take this woman to the next subway stop, gives the cabbie some money, and off they go. She turns around, he's, he's disappeared. And she knew it was St. Anthony. See, seek the things that are above. She didn't have to pay for the cab. <laughs> Seek the things that are above. Well, the, the saints, but mostly the Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Locked, bound, cre rejoicing in their eternal love for each other. And so blessed that the Father said, let's share this. That's creation. They're not any happier after they make us. In fact, all we give is giving them trouble. But <clears throat> they wanted to share that happiness. And it starts now. See, what Paul is trying to say is not walk around, you know, or be pious in the wrong sense, you know. It means keep your mind fixed on what really matters. Does it matter that you flunked your algebra exam? Well, yeah, but not really. You know, plenty of people flunked exams that were radiant saints right now. Flunked more than exams. Camillus Delellis, he and his father both were mercenary soldiers, roustabouts, you know, sensual, murderers, whatever. And he got religion. He got, you know, he turned to the Lord. He wanted to enter a religious order, and not a one of them would take him. Not you. So he just went down to the poorest hospital that he could find, and he began to tend to the sick. Remember, there weren't doctors and nurses and ambulances. They were just good people taking care, mostly monks, taking care of the sick. Christian, the Christians founded hospitals. There were none before. Um, and he went down to help them. Pretty soon, a whole bunch of people joined him, and he became the founder of an order. This was the guy who was a washout. But when he turned, you see, he turned to seek the things that are above, which is then described for us where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. That's the resurrection, right? Not just the Logos, but Ho Christos, the Christ forever, is at the right hand of the Father. He never abandoned being one of us forever. So seek this, you see. Well, how do I actually do it? Well, I think the start is a life of prayer. And you've got to fight for that. You've got to fight for that. Unless you're lucky somehow and you have a multi-million dollar and you don't have to do anything, but this whole culture is geared to keep you from prayer. Look at the average man who has to wake up at 6 o'clock, shave quick, get some breakfast, jump in the car, turn it on the bad news, and drive through traffic. Get to work already frazzled and mad. 
can spend the whole day under pressure, get in the car, come all the way home. It's half past six at night. He's finished. His kids are ready for bed. Is that life? It's the last form of slave bravery left in the country. The last form of slave labor left in the country. That man has to fight for a life of prayer. But I know them. I know them by the hundreds who get up early in the morning, four, five in the morning, and pray. And then their day is at peace. They suffer as much as, you know, they still might have a lousy boss. But, you see, they're with where Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. What a difference. And sometimes they know other guys who do that. So in the middle of the day, they call one another up. How you doing? Support. You see, support. But you've got to fight for a life of prayer. Well, if you're going to get up at three or four, I mean, four or five in the morning, you're going to go to bed. That means you may never see the final of another basketball game in your life. But you'll see Christ. And you can always tune on the thing in the morning. You know, you find out who is. One team wins and one team loses. It's always been that way. You know? It's a delightful to watch the sports, but at a certain point, click, go to bed, so you can get up on time. And in our culture, you might as well do that, because there's going to be... And then see if you can get home a little earlier, you men, to relate to your kids. I have a friend, a psychiatrist. They're going to hang me for this remark. But anyway, he has noticed he has helped over a thousand men leave off a homosexual lifestyle because he sees that what was lacking was male affection as a child. So if the men stay home, then the other little ones learn what it is to be a man relating to a woman. It's important that you fight for it, huh? So he goes on the same way, this ta'ano fronite. Uh, think about. Fronin means more than think about. Be preoccupied uh, with that which is above, not which is on earth. Now he describes the effect of baptism. You died. And your life is hidden with Christ in God. Your life is buried with him. Sunk into his reality. Your life is hidden with Christ in God. Think about that. And when Christ appears, who is your life, you will appear with him in glory. So it's worth it. Is it hard? Yeah. In an old agricultural culture, probably not nearly as hard as now. But it's hard. And the women don't have it <coughs> much easier, except they don't usually have the commute. But um, the women are home with the children. You know, years ago, the spiritual director for women who have families and look after a house and support their husband. And how can they have a regular prayer time when the kids are up and in bed and up and in bed? So they do their best. Maybe get 15, 20 minutes here or there. I said, why don't you do this? One Saturday a month, take off. Tell your husband, watch the kids. I'm going to take off. And go. And just pray. Bring your Bible, bring another book, bring a little notebook, and pray all day. You know, you would have thought I invented the wheel. What a help to these women. The Lord is just waiting for that one chance. One chance a month. And he takes it, and he helps them. That's what it means, you see. Seek the things that are above. 